welcome back to my channel. I am so excited, as always, to film a new Will I Buy It video. These ones are inspired by Samantha March, and I do always have our channel linked in my description box. So if you're interested in hearing my thoughts on some new releases, just keep watching. Okay guys, as always, there's a little guest here with me. He loves to come in here when I'm filming and then start whining because I'm not holding him. So there's that. But you guys really like seeing Teddy on my channel. So yeah, he's here just so you know. So the first thing I want to talk about is this new collaboration between ColourPop and Disney. They are doing a bunch of stuff. There's going to be some cream lipsticks, some super shock shadows, there's going to be some ultra glossy lips, and of course a eyeshadow palette. This stuff is so exciting, you guys. I seriously didn't see it coming at all that they were going to do a Disney collab and also do another eyeshadow palette because they literally came out with the fall one last week. So I'm filming this on a Friday and then this collab comes out this week or the upcoming week on the 28th of September. So yeah, I'm, I'm wanting to say no because this palette looks so boring, but I think they did it on purpose because all of us kids growing up that, you know, enjoyed Disney movies are going to want this. So I think I'm going to try and get my hands on the palette and then I don't really connect with any of the Disney princesses in like general, but I do have a special place in my heart for Belle because Beauty and the Beast um, was my high school musical. So I just always uh, tend to gravitate towards all things Beauty and the Beast. So I think I might get that. And Urban Decay is, you know, still teasing the Naked Cherry palette and collection. Really not very interested in anything to do with that. We've got some Mega Glow Glow Oils by Wet n Wild. So this is a new product that's set to launch on September 27th at Walmart. And I, I don't know. I do like to use glowy products in the summertime. But now that it's going into wintertime, I really don't feel like I need that necessarily so I mean if I maybe see it on a shelf I might grab it if it's affordable but I'm not in like some crazy you know rush to get it. Um, Huda Beauty is sneak peeking a setting spray which is exciting. I've really fallen in love with the Huda Beauty brand especially her foundation. Honestly she makes really really amazing um, foundation for my skin tone so I do like her. I know a lot of people ask me you know if she's like worth the hype and stuff and I personally think for brown girls she's like one of those brands that really caters to our skin tone so I do like to support her. Uh, Melt did bring their Gemini palette back and I don't know how it's probably sold out probably because everyone was like dying for it. It's $58. I do actually have a list of brands that I don't want to really talk about too much on my channel. And Melt's on there right now because I actually bought the 27 palette, which is one of their like limited edition palettes. And I just had a really tough time with the formula. It was a very fragile formula. It's very powdery and it wasn't pressed firmly enough. So one of my palettes literally broke as I was like opening it because the magnet was so strong that like that force of me opening it literally like shattered a palette. And then the same thing happened with the replacement they send me and they were going to send me a third palette and I was like please don't send me any more palettes just I'll send you my two broken palettes back please refund me and they did so I didn't have trouble dealing with their customer service but I was just after that I was very turned off so I don't recommend Melt I know everyone's going to do what they want with their money but personally I feel like you guys are my friends and I wouldn't want any of my friends you know spending their harder money on things that weren't like performing well for me so that's my two cents on that. Artist Couture just launched Diamond Lux Luminizers. They came out with four pressed highlighters and I feel like there was a time when all the beauty gurus were talking about Artist Couture because it's started by like a fellow influencer um, and I still see him at all like the events when I see other YouTubers Instagram stories and stuff like that and I don't know. I'm not really into this brand. I did buy one of his loose highlighters. I didn't think it was very good or anything. And I ended up selling it, I think, on my Poshmark. So 
I have no interest in picking up any of these highlighters, but I know, you know, people still really love highlighters, so that's a thing. A lot of the Stila holiday sets are now available on Sephora's website. I did have this highlighter palette because they came out with one last holiday as well. This year's one is called the Do All Over Glimmer Palette for $45. That pink shade in the middle is really beautiful to me. I'm sort of interested in it, but when I looked at it on Sephora's website, I was like, okay, I don't really actually need that, so I decided to pass on it. So Fenty's new lipstick, this is a matte lipstick. It's called the Stunna Lip Paint in Boss. It's a chocolate brown. And it's supposed to be a highly pigmented longwear formula. This is already available on Sephora's website. I passed on her red shade, and I'm going to pass on this one too. It's not something I really want to pay um, the price for to just, you know, have a collection of her liquid lipsticks. I think Rihanna does make some really good products, but this is just not for me. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just wanted to throw it out there. Yeah, I know a lot of people are really enjoying it. Some of our new products. Pat McGrath is coming out with nine new lip fetish tinted lip balm shades. They're sheer color for $38. I know my friend Kat has her eye on this bundle. Personally, I'm not too interested in these. I actually have her lip balm, the clear one, and I don't know what it is. I think when I buy something bougie, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't. Like, I spent too much money on that. I can't use it. I do that. Does anybody else do that? And so I haven't even used the lip balm yet, and I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to buy more lip balm. The only shade that's really calling my name is Flesh 3, but I don't need it, but I'm going to be interested to see if Kat gets them and if she'll have a review of them up. Now, Kevin Aquan's Nude Pop Pro Eyeshadow Palette is available. It is 12 rich, creamy textures with different finishes. This palette actually looks really beautiful on the Instagram photos. But when I saw it on Sephora's website, I was immediately, like, uninterested by it. So I was happy about that because usually when I see a palette, I want the palette. And in this case, I saw a palette and I didn't want it. And I was like, perfect. I'm not buying it. So, yeah, I'm going to pass on that. Um, Kylie and Jordan Woods, her best friend, are collaborating. And they're coming out with a whole collection I really am not interested in any of this stuff. I'm not a fan of Kylie's eyeshadow formula. I think it's a little bit pricey. I have bought some of the KKW palettes, but I haven't really reviewed them or anything on my channel yet. So if you guys are interested in that, I would definitely love to review them, test them out some more and review them for you guys. He's trying to eat my makeup. Okay, so Charlotte Tilbury came out with a new palette as well. This is the Stars In Your Eyes palette and Includes 12 eyeshadows. How much is this palette? Probably pretty pricey. I think I got the emailer from her when this was available. But these palettes look so boring, you guys. I'm just like, do people really expect, like, people to throw money down? And I know sometimes, I'm sure you guys see the things I buy and you're like, really? Like, that palette looks so lame, Karen. Like, why would you buy that? And Usually I have, you know, I usually buy things that I love. Like, I don't just buy shit for the sake of buying it. And I have bought some boring palettes that I love that you probably find really boring. But this is fucking boring, so I'm just passing on it. The next thing, I actually did buy this, is the Marc Jacobs Omega Glaze All Over Foil Luminizer for $49. I'm just really curious about this formula. I'm not sure, is it, like, highlighter or is it, like, a sparkly bronzer? Like... What's the deal? I just want the tea. So what I decided to do for all my tan friends is just buy it and take a shot at it and see how it's going to show up on my skin tone. Okay, so we have a date. Jeffree Star is coming out with Velour Lip Liners and some new Super Supreme Frost on September 28th. I personally don't really have any interest in lip liners. I have a few lip liners, but I never actually wear them. And I'm kind of over his highlighting products. My favorite thing from Jeffree Star are his liquid lipsticks. And I've really been enjoying the blood sugar palette. But other than that, I don't really have much more that I'm interested from him. This I'm excited for. I actually bought this collection. Not all of it, but some of it. It is Sephora's collection collaboration with the Museum of Ice Cream. And they did a sprinkle pool brush set. And a matching clutch. I already, I'm going to throw up a picture of me using the clutch. It was so cute. I got so many compliments. I got the Dream 
Team Pigment Palette, just an eyeshadow palette for $42, and it's in shape of a ice cream, and so it was just like too cute. I'm so shocked that they waited till September to launch this. It feels like it should have been a summer release, so I'm actually surprised that they held on to something so summery for so long. Seems like they could have launched it earlier in the summer and kind of made more money off of that concept. The next thing I didn't see coming was this new Viseart palette called Libertine Palette. This is a $49 eyeshadow palette and it's already available. I bought one of the first Petite something or the other and I bought the first one that they came out with and I honestly feel like Viseart's best formula are the 12 pan palettes, all the ones that have shimmer in them and stuff I'm really not a fan of. I think they decided to do some of those weird releases to kind of appeal to the mass audience, which I totally understand, but I think what they're good at are their mattes, and it's just interesting to watch them try to like branch off and do other things. I don't know, something about these colors, I just, it's not something I'm interested in, so I'm not going to spend my money on it. The other big collaboration that was announced is Desi and Katie, round two with Dose of Colors. I'm just really interested about the timing of this release. I feel like it was a little too close to the I Love Sarai collection and this eyeshadow palette, their Frankation palette, is so pretty but the blue and the black in that palette remind me so much of the two shades in the I Love Sarai palette and I already have this so I don't know why I would buy this one by Desi and Katie. I feel like the shades are just too similar. I do love the formula of the Dose of Colors new eyeshadows, but it just seems like a lot of eyeshadow right now, and I don't really need it, so I'm going to do my best to stay away. Um, the lip colors aren't really that enticing either. I think they did do a good job of them, but those shades I already have in my collection, so it's not something I really need. The highlighter is tempting. But I bought both the highlighters from the I Love Sarai collection and I also have um, one of their highlighters from the original launch. I can't remember if I bought Fuego or the other one. But yeah, it's just like, it's a great idea. I'm glad they bought it back for people that love some of those products. They're getting another chance to purchase them. But I feel like they should have spaced it out because Dose of Colors is, is still like considered an indie brand. I feel like it would have been nice for them to kind of space things out between their two big collaborations so their customers could like save up some money. And now I feel like this friendcation and this like collaboration with Desi and Kitty just kind of fell out of nowhere. So I think it would be really hard for people to just like have extra money laying around for this stuff, you know? So Anastasia Bentley Hills gave us a sneak peek or like a heads up on their holiday collection. I'm actually so excited for this situation it's i hate that the palettes are coming out so soon because it makes me wonder like what are we going to be talking about in december like are we going to be like already into spring by november um because i feel like all the holiday hype and all the holiday palettes it's gonna like die down before holidays even hit um so that's gonna be kind of unfortunate because like what are we gonna be talking about but i do like the look of the sultry palette it's kind of it is kind of like, what the heck? But I'm also really excited for it because you know the formula is going to be good. And that shade Bloom, everyone is talking about the shade Bloom and how beautiful and red it is. I just think it's going to be gorgeous, so I'm excited. I'll probably pick that one up, to be honest, this coming week. That's like the one thing I have my eye on from them. I'm not really interested in like their glitters or anything like that, but there's some good stuff coming out this week, so I better get my wallet ready. Like, it's going to be a freaking shit show. Okay, Becca just announced round three of their collab with Chrissy Teigen. I'm honestly like not that interested in the whole situation. I feel like I get that Becca is known for their highlighters, but I feel like they've come out with so many in the last couple of weeks. I have made no attempt to keep up with them. I think the last Becca highlighter I bought was the Dreamsicle. No, I bought the Becca collab with Chrissy Teigen the round two and honestly, I sent that back. It was not very good. I don't know who bought that highlighter because it was like the three strip situation. So yeah, interested to see what they will be coming out with. Here's something I am so excited about. Oh my gosh. 
Juvia's Place sneak peeked a collection called the Tribe Collection, and it looks like they're going to be doing an eyeshadow palette as well as some highlighters and what else? Yeah, some highlighters. And I'm so pumped by this green packaging. I'm really hoping it's going to be something that blows me away. Their last palette, I do want to review it for you guys, the Afrique palette. Wasn't like my favorite palette, but you know, I'm, I'm pretty loyal to Juvia's Place, so it is what it is. I feel like it's one of those brands that I like instantly will buy things from. It doesn't really matter like what the product is. If it's an eyeshadow palette, I'm usually buying it from them. Okay, and then the last thing I want to talk about in today's video is the new Viseart Grand Pro Volume 2 palette. So this is a Muse Beauty Pro exclusive, and I cannot believe this is a $175 palette. And what I really can't believe is I actually bought the Grand Pro Volume 1 when it launched. It came out around the same time. No, it came out for the holidays, I think, last year, and I bought it. And honestly, guys, I had to return that palette because... I could not justify keeping it. I didn't see myself using it. And this palette is a all shimmer palette. So it is perfectly created to complement the original one that they came out with. And I saw swatches of this palette and it did look incredibly beautiful. But I have such an extensive palette collection. I could not justify something this big. It would not get any use in my collection. I'd maybe play with it for a week at most and then it would just sit there and collect dust. Now, if you are a makeup artist, I feel like this would be an incredible palette to have, especially because you could reach into the first Grand Pro and then just kind of mix and match your own palettes and colors. And like, there are so many endless possibilities with something like this, but I'm not the target market for it and it's okay. So I will be passing on it, but it does look incredibly beautiful. Okay, so I heard a lot of people talking about Kathleen Light's the Fall in the City nail polish collection. I know I said that was the Viseart palette was the last thing I want to talk about, but really quick, I did order her whole fall bundle. I'm so excited. I've fallen back in love with my KL polishes, and honestly, I've had them since she first started launching them, and they're such good quality. My bottles have not dried out yet. I want to show you guys all the shades I have from her someday and just kind of do a little review on the formula, but I think. It is honestly the best formula out there as far as all the nail polish I've tried. I'm going to stop buying like nail polish from like Essie and stuff because the KL polish is the one that lasts the best on me. Okay guys, that is everything for today's Will I Buy It series. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!